Good morning, Wes and Mia. Good morning. Morning, Colin and maybe Lizzie. Good morning. Good morning, Joss, maybe Jenna. Good morning, Eliza and Alexis. Good morning, Chris and Joshua. Good morning, Taylor. Good morning, Alex. Good morning, Sonia and Nicholas. Good morning, Beneshevitz family. Good morning, Nolan. Good morning, Jack and Colin. Good morning, Ella. Hank's chewing on the bone behind me. Uh -oh. Sounded a little loud upstairs. Morning, Beckett. Good morning, Addison and Juliet. Good morning, Maya. Good morning, Sophia and Tommy. Good morning, Addie. Yeah, Hank is back here. Hank, come here. Come here. Come on. As soon as he comes over, right now he's really interested in his bone. But he'll come over. I've nicknamed him Shadow because he follows me around everywhere. Right now, he's having fun with his bone. <laughs> That's an ad. I'll go ahead and turn that off. So I did remember before we get started, good morning, Allison and Will and Mabel and Peyton. Oh, thank you, Nolan. I am good. Great, thank you. Hi, Will. Morning, Neil and Jenna. So I remembered to get my shark tooth or maybe my rock. So this is what it is. Maybe I put it right in front of this white. So what do we think? Look like a shark tooth? I mean, it kind of does. Hi, Sean. Hi, Oliver. I don't know. You guys let me know. So the top doesn't quite look like what I would think a tooth would look like. That kind of looks rock to me, but the rest of it sort of looks toothish. I don't know. You guys let me know what you think. Rock. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so I still hold on to it this whole time. Because even if it's just rock, it's pretty cool rock. Well, Alex says it's a shark tooth. And I know Alex knows his stuff. So maybe I'll go with Alex on this. <laughs> it's a shark tooth. All right. Um, well, I guess, I guess I'll give it a couple more minutes. We're getting uh, mixed reviews on it. And that's why I kind of feel about it. Sometimes when I look at it, I'm like, that is so a tooth. And then sometimes when I look at it, I'm like, that is just a rock. But I'll hold on to it. Maybe someday I'll make it back out to Calvert Cliffs again. Somebody said the other day when we were talking about it, about a place, some beach that has shark's teeth. So if somebody wants to say what that was again, that would be awesome. I forget what it was. 
I did show the teeth. Show it again. People just quiet. I'll never get this. Never, never. So. All right. Before we get started, I just wanted to say thank you, thank you so much. These two weeks have been so much fun. I love it. I love seeing all of your comments. I love seeing all of my, the names at least, of my students. And of course, our spirit day today is Lisbon Lions Day. So I've got my t-shirt on. Um, and I just miss you all so much. So I'm so glad that we get to at least do this for now. And um, someone they can draw together. And all the new friends that I've made from all, all of Howard County and Maryland and other states. Um, it's just, it's pretty amazing that we get to do this. So I'm very excited. And teachers do have to work next week, but I haven't heard a schedule. So as of now, we'll say 10 o'clock next week. And if I hear anything different, um, I'll let you guys and your families know the change ASAP. But we'll go with 10 o'clock for now. All right, so we're going to start today. Rest of our... I have four animals to add to our outdoor enclosure or open air enclosure. And the first one we're going to start with was a request of the manatee. And the manatee is a large, fully aquatic, herbivorous marine mammal. So that means they're fully in the water all the time. And there's only three species of manatees. And they can be get up to 13 feet long and 1,300 pounds, so like it said in the beginning, a large mammal. And they paddle like flippers, so they can swim easily underwater. And they're referred to as sea cows because they are slow plant eaters, similar to cows on land. So they just swim slowly through the water, and they eat their plants, uh, and are very peaceful, just like cows on land. So they're called sea cows. And they spend 50% of their day sleeping, sort of like teenagers now, my children now, who are still upstairs asleep. Um, and they only swim three miles an hour. So very slow, like I said, peaceful um, animals. And their babies are also called calves, just like land cows. They eat sea grasses and weeds, just like cows eat regular grasses. And they live in shallow, marshy coastal areas and rivers on the Caribbean Sea and the Gulf of Mexico. So they like warmer water as well. Okay, so we're gonna start with our manatee. All right, so we're gonna start with the manatee's head. And it's sort of like an awkward potato. So we're just going to Create this little head shape. It doesn't have to be exactly like this. It can be just an oval that has an open end. Or but it just sort of, it's not very smooth. It's sort of bumpy-ish. Now we're gonna go ahead and add the eye and the mouth. And it's down in this part of the face. So I'm going to do the eye like this. It's sort of a hooded eye. Sort of a, the word of the weak derpy, a sort of derpy looking smile. Now we're going to do the body, and the body is sort of like another potato that goes curved around on the back and comes across on the front. And they're big, so don't worry if you make it too big, an awkward potato. <laughs> I love it, I love that line. And we're going to add the flippers, and it has a big flipper in the back. So we're going to add the side flippers first. And we're going to add, make a little sort 
sort of ring like that first, and that's where the flipper is going to come out of. And then we're going to add a flipper coming out of that. Okay. And then you probably want to erase that line where I just put that X. I may have made my flipper a little too big, but that's okay. Be a little shorter. And then we're going to put just the um, end of it that looks like it's coming from the other side. So you're just going to see this little bit coming out from that side. Now we're going to give it that paddle in the back. Also going to give it this little sort of like head wrinkle here. And that's our manatee. Yeah, I think I did make this flipper a little too long. That's okay. So just swimming along nice and slow, eating its grass and its weeds, sleeping half the day away. Okay, so this is a manatee. Somebody was asking. I'm going to hold it up for a couple minutes. Oh, no, I didn't. Come back. All right, so that was our manatee. Now we're moving on. So that one, when we draw him, we'll draw him in the water in the enclosure. And you can put him fully underwater, I think. I put him mostly underwater, sort of his back is coming out a little bit. Um, so the next one is going to be on the land part of our enclosure, sort of back where the seal is or where I made the seal, I'm not sure where you made yours. Um, and it is a, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't even say what it was. It is a puffin. And puffins are found at our aquarium. And I always thought when I was little, uh, we went to the aquarium, I thought puffin was just like a related, um, a bird related to a penguin. But they are not related to the penguin at all. I guess I kind of knew that as an adult, but uh, I just remembered when I was younger being at the aquarium, but I just figured it was a kind of penguin, but it's not. It is a seabird and there are three species of puffins and they eat by flying, not super high above the water, but not right. Like if this was the ocean, they're not hovering here. They're a little bit high. And as soon as they see food, they dive down and get it. Sort of like um, pelicans do and a lot of birds that you see, maybe if you're, sitting by the ocean and you see birds fly and all of a sudden they dive down and get their food. That's the way a puffin eats as well. And they live in very large colonies. So lots of them and they are either on coastal cliffs or offshore islands in the North Pacific Ocean and the North Atlantic Ocean. So they like it where it's colder. Um, and they're known for having their black and white feathers, stocky build and large beaks. And their beaks get really bright and colorful during mating season. They get really bright um, orange and red. And then after mating season, the um, it, they shed off the colorful part of their beak. And it gets, actually, I'm not even sure what color it gets. I didn't write that down. Uh, but I would imagine just something sort of neutral. And then it gets bright again the next mating season. And they got the name Puffin because of the way their bodies are sort of puffed out, the chubby kind of look to it. Um, they have very short wings that they, when they swim, so they do swim too, they sort of use a flying motion to swim, but they fly as well. So they have these little short wings that fly, and they have to um, flap their wings very quickly because they're so short in order to maintain their flight. Um, and when they're in their colonies, when they're with all their families and buddies, they're very vocal. When flying over the ocean, they're silent. 
because they have to be quiet so they don't um, scare their food away. And they eat mostly fish. And because their beaks are so big, they can hold up to a dozen fish in their beaks and then bring it back to their colony. So it saves time um, during hunting and then feeding their family. All right, I think that was all about the puffin. Leave my manatee out of the way. All right, here we go. Well, puffin has a lot of steps. So I'll go very slowly so we can Oh wait, somebody came by. Hold on. Come here. Everybody is asking for you. We'll take a little Hank break. There he is. Hank, look right there. You see everybody? I know. You wondering why I picked you up? You're just about to eat your bones some more. There he is in all of his wrinkly goodness. We decided he's uh, he might need to go on a post quarantine. It getting kind of chubby. <laughs> All right, we're gonna draw now. I'm gonna put you down. All right, so the puffin. So we're gonna start with it has lots of pieces because it has um, its outer face, its beak, and its eye. So we're going to start with the, head, the um, top part of the head. And it goes with some little feathers in the back. Oh, Frank says hi, Hank. I think he misses Frank. And then we're going to add the interior part of the face. So it's sort of going to go along the line. Make a shape like this. So my students know, but Hank's, Hank's brother or um, half brother, his name is Frank. And in my art room, I have three sinks. So I have a Ziggy sink, a, a Hank sink, and a Frank sink. So Hank and Frank are half brothers, and Frank belongs to my niece and nephew, and he's a black pug. So they get to play a lot, and they have not played together in um, two weeks, almost three weeks. And the last time they played together, they ran, <laughs> ran away together, but then they came back. So they're sort of naughty brothers. All right, so now we're gonna add the beak. Remember I said the beak is big and it's sort of pointed, pointy. Hey, no, get <laughs> Frank is um, my niece and nephew's dog, so um, my niece and nephew's dad is my husband's brother. So they're also gyros. All right, so I'm going to add some little details here. And I'm going to hold it back up. <clears throat> I may, have, I may have made my beak a little big, trying to exaggerate the size of it. That's okay. I also realized I made that dot in the wrong place. That's not where that should be. The dot should be here. So ignore this dot right there. The dot should be where the beak meets. It does have that sort of pointiness that a flamingo's beak has. It's just not as long. Good observation. 
All right, now I remember you, I said he was um, puffy, so chubby, so we gotta make his body kind of puffy. Hi, Giovanna and Stavros. All right, so we're gonna come down and then his body's gonna come around. We're gonna add some um, details on that on his body. All right, so now we're gonna create his tummy by adding a line. And then adding a line for the wing. Well, we did a penguin last week when we did the zoo. Um, so you can, you can certainly add it to this one. Um, and if you need the drawing instruction for that, I'm like not 100% sure what day it was. It was either the first or second day of the zoo last week. So Monday or Tuesday of last week. And then all we need to do is add his flippers. And his flippers are actually bright orange like his beak. Um, so when you're coloring that in later. Of course, you can make your um, puffin no, um, any color you want. When I did mine, I did mine pretty true to nature. I, you know, made, made his um, body black and white. I just realized I made a little bit different line on mine. That's okay. Um, and then I did his beak red, orange, and yellow, and his slippers orange. But you can do it however you want. It'd be really cool to see sort of a rainbow beak that kind of goes into a rainbow puffin. So that's our puffin, our puffy puffin. Oh, second day. Second day last week was the penguin, so that was last Tuesday. Thank you, Ella, Ella S. Okay. Oh, here it is. All right, our third animal was very um, highly requested is the otter. So um, otters are carnivorous mammals and there's 13 species of otters and they're semi-aquatic so they swim a lot in the water but they live on land and they're related to weasels and badgers and minks um, and uh, ferrets as well. So that's what they're sort of similar to. I sometimes think Hank looks like an otter just because he has that long body like they do. Um, and an otter's den, so where they live, is called a holt or a couch. So I thought that would be a pretty funny picture uh, if you wanted to. Well, the otter, we're going to draw um, one that's in the water, but it'd be funny to draw an otter sitting on a couch because since that's what their home is called. Um, and also males, the male otter is referred to as a dog or a boar, which I thought was interesting. And females are called sows. Um, so I wouldn't, you wouldn't have thought, or I wouldn't have thought either well, any of those names kind of fit with an otter. And then their babies are called pups. So like a little dog. Um, and they have very powerful webbed feet, which help them swim. If, if you ever seen the otters at the Maryland Zoo, um, they're in the, I think they're in the Maryland section of the zoo and you can kind of walk through a little water tunnel and kind of see them swimming over. They're very fast and they're so cute. And I also recommend Googling um, on YouTube or going to YouTube and looking up um, an otter mom and baby. It's really cute. So the mom is laying on her back 
kind of floating and kind of cuddling the baby and it's just it's really sweet so i would recommend looking that up um oh and they um have a seal like ability to hold their breath underwater so they can swim for a while underwater like a seal um they are two to six feet and can get up to 100 pounds so they're not huge but 100 pounds for an otter that seems pretty big um and they have insulated under fur that keeps them warm and snugly and then their outer layer of fur are long guard hairs to sort of protect them and it traps the air in between the guard hairs and the fur to keep them warm and dry and also buoyant in the water so they don't sink to the bottom that was pretty cool okay so let's start with this little otter okay so the otter has sort of a bump for a head and then this is the top of his body and then the bottom part of the body comes around like this Now we're going to add those feet that are like flippers. And then let's go ahead and add that tail that would come kind of through here. And then we're going to add the little toes that would be on here. Oops. Because those are his feet, it's not a fin, so you want to add those. Now we're going to have the details of his face. He has these little ears that come off the side. And his eyes are sort of on the side like that too. And then we're going to add a little mouth like that. And then we're going to give him this little like fur around his neck. We're going to add his paws on his front or his arms. I'm not sure how what you would refer to them as. Delete that, or sorry, not delete, erase that little line right there. You can also make him holding something. You can make him hold baby otter. That would be really cute. Of course, this otter is laying in the water. So when you draw them in your enclosure, draw them in the water part. And I think I drew mine. <clears throat> yeah, I made mine brown, but you can make it whatever color you want. Make him holding something. Maybe he's holding something to eat. Maybe he's holding. Um, I don't know, another animal that we've drawn holding a puffin. That would be funny. Okay. And then the last one, I actually just decided to add this this morning. Um, just because when I was filling in my final drawing, I felt like I needed one more thing in the water. So I decided to add an orca or whale because I think they're just very cool looking. Um, so the killer whale or the orca is a toothed whale and it's part of the dolphin family. We talked about that yesterday. And it's the largest um, mammal in the dolphin family. 
Um, and some only eat fish, but some species of the killer whale hunt seals. So they um, may eat them as well. And no animal preys on them. So they have to, are at the top of their food chain. Um, so they will not be killed by another animal for eating. Um, and they are found in each of the world's oceans. So they're widespread and they're very social. They live in pods. That was what their group is called. And I believe if I looked at my research from yesterday, that's what dolphins, uh, the dolphin we did, I think they're in pods as well. And they are um, very easily trained and in captivity, um, they mimic movements and they learn very quickly and they're very intelligent. So that's why the um, killer whale shows at the SeaWorld were so popular because um, they're highly intelligent, and very able to be trained. But um, I believe that what I was just looking at, they stopped doing killer whale shows um, and in closed places in 2016. So they no longer do that. But I remember when I went to SeaWorld in high school, we saw the killer whale show and it was very cool. Okay, so we're gonna start with our killer whale. And again, just like all of them, you can make the killer whale whatever color you want. However, I would highly recommend something in white. So I did mine black and white, but if you wanna change it up, I just feel like a, a dark color and white is um, very striking. So that's what I would recommend. All right, so we're gonna start with the top of the whale and it's just sort of like a, a, a rainbow sort of line. It does it will start to look like a drumstick. We talked about that yesterday. I might have mine, made mine too bumpy. So I'm gonna redraw that. I don't like the way that looks. Okay, and then we're going to add the tail. Then we're going to add the fins. And this is one where you're probably going to want to delete, or I keep saying delete, sorry, erase lines. It should actually come in. <laughs> oh, Shanene. Is Shanene? Um, trying to remember who that was. Molly? Molly Shanene? Or is Melanie Shanene? <laughs> All right, so now we're going to add the line that's going to divide where the black and white is. So we're going to come. Um, down sort of where the mouth is to the fin, and then from the fin to the tip. <laughs> and then they have the spot. It's sort of, it sort of looks like that's where their eye is and it's white. <laughs> so we're gonna add a little eye here. And then if you wanted to, you can sort of make 
this, a little space here. So you can see you can make a little open mouth right there just by making a little bit of space between those two sections. I'm just gonna do a quick color in with my marker to show you where the darker color would be. It would just be the top fin and then all this area, keeping that dot white. Oh, my marker is running out. And down here. So it's only that white spot and then the belly area is white. I do not remember um, Bertha Sita. I do, I do remember Sinead though. It is crazy that I, it has been two weeks since I've seen you all or my Lisbon Lions. Hank is so cute and I don't know where he went. Oh, he's laying in the sun. Maybe if I call him, he'll come back. Hanky, Hank, come here, come here. Nope. All right, so here's my finished outdoor open air enclosure. You can see I put my manatee, like I was saying, ooh, half underwater, half out. My killer whale, I don't know this, these are size proportion. Maybe my killer whale should have been a little bit bigger. My puffin on the rock in the back and my seal. Ziggy I hear moving around. I think it's Ziggy to come. Ziggy! Ziggy, come here. All right. I'm not gonna pick Ziggy up. Let's see. Ziggy. Oh, there is Hank. All right. So my husband's gonna pick Ziggy up. So let's see. Oh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Where are you? Oh, there there you go. <laughs> Ziggy, look here. Hey, look. <laughs> what are you doing, buddy? All right. All right. <laughs> Ziggy is not as easily maneuvered as Hank is. Hank is wondering where he went. Oh, somebody is sleeping. All right, we'll have a wonderful day finishing your drawing. Uh, post them on Facebook so I can see. And next week we will start our farm. And I know what people have asked for snakes. We can do a snake on the farm. Um, we'll do a barn and some farm animals and different things like that. It'll be lots of fun. And we'll plan on it being uh, 10 a.m. unless you hear from me otherwise. Um, but that we should be good to go with that. A great day. Thank you again so, so much for uh, all the kind words on Facebook and my letter of mail, my goodies. I really, really appreciate it. Um, I love I'm doing this um, so we can stay connected and it's for me to stay sane. And I hope it's helping you and your families and you're enjoying it as much as I am. Have an amazing weekend. Um, try to have some fun with your family outside. And I will see you on Monday. Bye.